Okay, so let's call the meeting to order. Uh, January 13th, 6.05. Okay. Um, so we don't have any new minutes to do, do we? And uh, is anybody in here at public speak? Pat, you got anything um, to say? Okay. You're just here for the proceedings. Just want to say hi. Oh, How you guys doing? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So I think um, what we have right now is we have a couple things. The uh, building size provision, which I told Dan Jr. that we would hold off until the end of the meeting to do that because our planning board's looking at that tonight. Um, I'm not sure you, if I might, Mr. Chairman, do you normally follow the planning? Like and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, you wait until they make. We wait until we make them, and then I mean, the thing is, is they're with with um, with the size recommendations. They're gonna come up with their stuff, and then then we have a joint hearing with them, and then after the joint, own. yeah, then we have then you do. Right. So that that's like the the zoning process, the whole timeline with the clock that's ticking in the background. Um, so, I mean, it just kind of was coincidence that we were meeting tonight. I had no idea. Um, Did everyone so, get the recommendations for the recommendations from Jessica Allen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we're, we're, and we'll, we'll do the sign orders? No, no, no. no. Or the uh, building signs. I remember that. I just wasn't prepared to talk about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that one later. Um, and so, uh, the mayor can't be here to do the classification and pay plan. That she wanted to do, so that puts us to um, science. Back to where we started. Now I did send out an email with the model sign, but I resent it because the um, I just resent it today. Because you, when you said that there was no attachment, mm -hmm. I, I reattached it, and uh, and honestly, that's the best. Uh, Sign ordinance I've ever seen. Well, now so, you're talking about just the LEDs or the whole ordinance. No, I'm talking about the whole ordinance. So this thing is not changing that. Right? Well, we don't know that yet. Because I'll tell you what, after looking at this, I've never seen a sign ordinance that's so clear and easy to follow. It, it's un unbelievable. It, like it's a model sign ordinance, and if we had known, if we had known at the time, it's, it's, where is it from, Sam? Uh, if you want, I can send you the link as well. It's uh, I. I didn't get it. Did you send it to me? Uh, I did. The first one didn't have an attachment, but you said you sent it today. I did. Send, I just resent it. It is. Um, you might have sent it to my MSN account. It was, yeah, it's great sign on this. Uh, yeah, that's it. That is it. Sent. Okay. So about forty minutes ago. Yep, five nineteen. I sent I it. Got you. And it is a model sign ordinance, and as I open it here, it, will, it is from the town of Cornelius, North Carolina. Hmm. Um, it's really, it's probably one of the better ones that I've seen. So, but that's kind of auxiliary to um, the other review that we have of the total sign ordinance for, I believe the way it came to us was inconsistencies and other, it was pretty... For the LEDs? Right? No, no, what came to us was from Joe. Oh, they could just say the whole ordinance? Just looking at some inconsistencies and then, but I think that the impetus of that, some of that was the LED signs, um, which, you know, was... Um, and, and do you, Dan, do you have an update on, because I know Joe mentioned that um, Jack said that there was no, it wasn't, it wasn't worth. Yeah, he didn't say that we couldn't prevail. He said that our likelihood of prevailing was, uh, he didn't feel was, uh, that, I mean, don't. Uh, it wasn't worth the kind of money. It wasn't worth what it was going to cost. Right. Because of the special permit provisions in the current ordinance, right. which that's one of the things that he said he recommends problem. getting rid of uh, because that allowed them to do what they were doing. Right. And basically, the court would say. And and my my three recommendations, sale that I submitted, were really 
designed if if there was a delay in the other applicant not coming forward, you know, that we could maybe change it before they right. came. I mean, which right. is obviously why we're with him now. So uh, now I don't know about such things as changeable sign or whatever, but it's still something we want to be in there or whatever. Well, I mean, I think that's kind of what we're looking at now is um, now that this has been kind of brought up, what do we want to do with the the idea of a changeable sign um, and electronic message center? And do we want? How do we tighten this up to um, avoid situations where the zoning board is going to circumvent? Uh, our ordinance. That's at least from my perspective. That's yeah. From my point of view, for tonight, I'm hoping we will deal with the specificity of changeable signs and the idea of gasoline station signs. Yes. If we're going to, if you're going to approach changing the whole ordinance, to Not me yet. that's massive work. In that, even though you have a good ordinance. It's going to need to be vetted by, you know, like oh, Jessica. Oh, absolutely. Everybody. No, no, no. So I, I, I would hope we could write language that fixes at least the parts in here that were the main concern, the LED signs for gas stations and whether we can do that, and what zones we want to put them in, and getting rid of the special permit language, which Jack felt was very much the problem with allowing the zoning board to interpret any way they want. There's so much specificity in this ordinance that it's easy to change something, to deal with a special permit in my mind and then change a lot of what's written. Right. So, uh, well, and that's I, a big thing, getting rid of that and then writing something that's specific to gas stations. Yeah. You know, if you want to do that, and I'm, I'm, I, I am, I am happy to, to certainly go that way now. Right. And so, so I wasn't suggesting that we wholesale the whole rebuild. Right. I, I was just saying I found one that I think is a really yeah. high quality example. Um, <laughs> I, it, I just question because I, I came in late. Um, uh, what you just uh, spoke to Dan about um, uh, what Jack said, was he talking about the, the special permit provisions? Was he talking about specifically 10.04 E in particular? 10.02 like two, 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 It's for an example. It's, it's two of them. E is a special permit F from the zoning board and 10.04 there's two right. two places yeah where are they yeah uh, that's okay that's great i'm glad it's being discussed i have yeah. an issue with that as well well and i feel like that's not the only place that it's in there um it's in I, it's, it's the two places that i found 10.02 yeah, f places. and 10.04 e it's yeah. mentioned in 10.04 e it's sort of a redundant yeah language. it's a redundant okay. one yeah but it's there so you have to remove both of them right um so you're saying you want to remove that entirely so you can't you don't have another way. Um, I'm. I'm. No. I'm not. Say, I'm not saying that. I, th I think it's something that we need to look at. I don't know if we're going to remove it entirely or if we're going to modify it. And I mean, because the reason, historically, the reason why that was in there was because what if there's something we don't haven't thought of? That's, yeah. Yeah. But right. and and so um, and and that way, and if there is something that we didn't think of, and someone there. Then again, I don't necessarily like the fact that it's just like, well, if you don't like it, then just go to the zoning board of appeals. Um, so th that's something that I think we need to talk about. We need to review now, Dan. Um, to your to your point about um, changing, uh, and I didn't have time to make copies of this, but I I'd be happy to go make copies of this. You could just read it out. Uh, okay, so I wrote a um, you know basically an amendment uh, change, uh, which would change in under in definitions. Change it would change changeable signs. Uh, to electronic changeable sign, service station LED sign. Okay. An electronic sign with the capability of content change by means of manual remote operation should not violate any of the provisions of section 10.4L. Okay. So um, then uh, it would add under general standards, section M, service station LED sign. A sign that displays the price cost of a product can be red or green and permitted as long as they meet other requirements of this ordinance. Is that some kind of language that you've gleaned from another yes, city? It is. It's now you said, first you said service station. Yes. In the de definition. But then you said product, which to me opens the door to 
Well, it like actually. Commodity, well, it? well, here's the reasoning. You need to understand the reasoning. Okay. Um, sure. If you say <laughs> gasoline, if they um, have the ability to charge um, cars electrically for a cost, if you you know if you say diesel, they're not going to be able to sell unleaded. I mean, so within this, there's not going to be a gas station, a service station is not going to necessarily want, and I think if we're worried about them putting the price of a carton of cigarettes up there, then we, we can restrict that. You know, we can restrict um, uh, the, the sizing in a way to, to probably to, to um, mitigate that. Or if we're talking about a service station, we might put in something that is specific to the fuel. I was going to say, use the word fuel in the language someplace. Yeah. Because all of your, most of your service stations sell a lot more than just fuel. Right. And you have your Cumberland Farms, your 7-Elevens. I, I think you need to be specific. That's a great point. All right. There. So I'll, I'll add, I'll add a, a fuel note. Did you say red or green? Red or green. How about and? Most diesel is in green. Right. Um, and or. And or. And or would work. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, all right. So here's the criteria. Uh, permanent this would be under M in general standards. This like would be under M in general standards. Right. Permanent ground mounted sign for use by fuel service stations for the purpose of advertising fuel costs are allowed. So there's fuel. Yeah. Uh, no such sign shall exceed 32 square feet with a maximum of six feet. Um, height maximum height of six feet. Do you is that specific? That's a pretty standard. Sign, that's a that standard no. That's a standard industry for gasoline. What stuff, I'm saying is. Signs. You have specific language in here about size sign, size of signs. Say that fast. Size of signs in certain zones. Yes. Is that consistent with, say, the highway business? This is consistent with the highway topic? business signs. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I thought that's all you would need to do. The size should be consistent. The size should the be zones, consistent with the zones and, and size restrictions. And within it can't be a bigger sign if you're not allowing it. For other, uh, for other things, right? And and also this this is a, a standard um, fuel sign. Okay. Um, Did you say M, section M. Section is creating. I created section M. Okay. So well, we have an M gateway, gateway sign. Gateway signs, right? That's so you're going to have to do ten point oh four. Ten point oh four goes all the way to all the way to T. I feel like when I was it goes all the way to U, so this would have to be what's in No, I, I I put it well, when at least when I had it in front of me electronically, I snuck it in. I well, feel then like I snuck it in in the I should have put it in the right, right place. You, I think I, I I see what you're trying to do. Like put I put it after electronic message center because yeah. it's very similar. Yeah, yeah, that's what. But then you'd have to have an amendment to change every letter after that. So it might be like a subsection, subsection a like. N or N like N A or, or whatever. It's but or it should L2. be L two. L two. That's fine. Little two. L two. All right. So, um, so that's it, it. Talks about the height. LED numerals may not exceed twelve inches in height. Signs okay. may be double sided. All ground mounted signs shall shall be located a minimum of five feet behind the street right of way. Um, at intersections, no sign shall be a in the sight triangle as defined in this ordinance. So. Um, I can't okay. remember where we talk about this, like sighting. So you can't put a sign right at the corner of a street. As long as it's consistent with what other language is in there, if it makes an exception to the other location, size, or anything else yeah. for that particular zone, I think that would be a mistake because that makes it confusing. Right. If so I don't think it does. I just want to. I wanted to make sure that if, if say they're going to take down an old sign and put up a new sign, they're not going to move it out next to the street. Well, but they couldn't do they that. They have anymore. to follow the ordinance. The ordinance says you can't put any kind of sign so so close to the then street. Then you're okay. Oh. I, yeah. Okay. Um, so color. All lighted LED numerals shall be. Green and or, and or red okay. in color. The LED background screen may only be black. Uh, illumination. The sign must not exceed a maximum illu illumination of 5,000 nits, which is um, candles per square meter, during daylight hours, and a maximum of 500 nits um, between dusk and dawn is measured from the sign face at maximum brightness. That's how 
sign companies measure the brightness of signs. And is that consistent with, say, Northampton's ordinance? Because they allow. Um, I don't. Where think, did you get that from? I don't think Northampton specifies the. Where did you brightness. get that particular? Th I got this. Oh, jeez, I can't remember. I was using like three different places. Nits. Nits. N I T S. And it's candelas per square meter. Well, I'm happy because I was worried about language about luminosity. Yeah. That you would have be specific with it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then. So you said 5,000 days. 5,000 during the day. 500 at night. Uh, such signs may not display display light of such intensity or brilliance to cause glare or otherwise impair the vision of a driver or result in a nuisance to the driver. So I mean that's that was like what I okay. put together in a few minutes. So uh, it, it covers most everything but I think you need to put language that signs cannot change maybe once per day and cannot cannot flash something like that because if you're driving down the street and you see a light flash in your eye it's a nuisance mm -hmm. it's distracting right so i have a problem with them like you said or somebody well, I, said I it somebody about, just said you i was know, talking about cumberland farms because they're talking about coming into east Hampton. and some of their new stations sale and they have two prices they have smart price right. you have their card yeah, yeah, and they yeah. have regular price now they flash it they'll and, and they don't do it fast but it'll say smart smart price mm -hmm. and then in a while that goes away and up to pops regular right. and again I guess that's just what you know uh, I don't well, necessarily I think that there's um, the federal government regulates they do it's that. 30 seconds you can't change the, the sign the image on the sign within 30 seconds and then the change has to occur within one second and it has to be a full change so right. it's like the but that's for changeable words. signs right right and these these are here? and these are these are only changing to for the price there's no, uh, as far as, you know, the intent of this, it's to have a static price. Exactly. And not have, you know. That's, I guess, where I'd worry about that. flashing. Switching. I, and I, I want, if they have a numerous pricing, like they wanted to show the credit card price, I didn't think that was legal anymore, but versus the cash price, mm -hmm. then they should design a sign that has Both. six, six places instead of yeah. just three, like, you know, how they do three. <laughs> these or whatever but just to go back a little because I, I followed this the, the mobile out here on uh, uh, Northampton Street see they had to stay within the exact measurement of that sign they have now because it's a non-conforming sign right so if they made any change to that sign it would be they would have to take it out and, and put a new one, one in. so that's why they're only gonna have two prices they're gonna have um, let it and I'm I mean, uh, unleaded and uh, yeah, it's so going to be regular. No, they don't have diesel. I think it's regular and they have diesel. Do they have diesel? But I don't think they're going to put diesel on there. I think it's going to be regular and I, I shouldn't say, but I think there's only going to be two sides. It's going to mm -hmm. be right now. There's like three. They're only going to have two because yeah. they needed it within that area. I'm just huh. saying that's a. Uh, it'll be a, the exact same size of where their pricing is now. It's not going to be any bigger or any smaller. It's got to well, go. Uh, so I, I think for, for otherwise this they'd have to change the sign because I think they're too high. They're too uh, you know under. Our current zone was in before, so they're obviously grandfathered. My only concern is flashing in some way. Yeah, I mean, you know, so they want to blink the sign, you know, so you see that. Oh, look at our price. It's so for for this, that's I, that, I think you that's have the easy. nuisance language. That's yeah, and then it, I, I think if it was flash, like flashing, boom, 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 come stop here or something. But I, like every, I've never seen a illuminated gas sign that's flashing or doing anything weird other than just showing the cost. And you know what? But I, and I've seen in order for it to do that, it would be computerized, or really programmable, mm -hmm. which we don't allow in that zone. Well, there okay. is a yeah. There's an open sign on the the Mexican restaurant on the way the, here, and it has yeah. it has white lights that go around it, and then the white lights they never change. the The sign is definitely there, but the white lights go in a circle, Chase. and it is. <laughs> Really, like yeah. that. I think is that is what you're talking about. It's it's unregulated through our ordinance. Is it inside? It's an inside yeah. window it's sign. Inside. That, is, ah, that is not. Okay. That is not a regular. Because I think the lottery now gives the LED for all the lottery tickets. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I do. I mean, and so, and I think for for this for the service station sign, I have no problem with the flashing. I mean, I was. You mean putting the language in? Putting the language in. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, but I was looking at the heats. You know, like couldn't have like a better business in town and they have on their sign of all crazy things in the world flashing lights yes they do, they do. it tells so you the weather the temperature tells you the date and it tells you the time 
and I can't, I'm hell bent that I haven't crashed that. yet uh, driving down the street I mean, with we, that well, sign. We, we, we grandfathered those in. Right. Time and temperature signs, aren't they listed in here? They are. They were grandfathered in, I recall. Yeah. yeah. But, and, I, but and if you wanted to put a new one, there was, I believe that you can't put a new one. Yeah. No, you cannot. So if you, want, if you wanted to upgrade that to something that was a little less flashing, you know, maybe a little bit more static, that would be prohibited. One, one thing that we had talked about briefly earlier is that one of the reasons that this wasn't addressed before was that the technology is not there? Is that, did I understand that correctly? Mm, the technology was definitely, it was, it was more emerging. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we did this in what, 2010? 2000. No. 2009, 10? No, no, it was later. Later than that. It was um, even you know, 11 or 12. But so that's something that needs to be reconciled, though, because you mm -hmm. look at a changeable sign, a sign with the capacity, capability of content change by means of manual or remote operation computer, and then we look at the electronic message center, an exterior computer programmable <coughs> sign, changeable or displaying words, symbols, uh, figures, or picture images that can be altered or rearranged by remote means without altering the face or the surface of the sign. So now we're adding a third category, basically a electronic messaging changeable service station sign. Right. You know what I mean? what did you call it in your definition? Um, a uh, electronic ch changeable sign, it's under that, so that which is in there, mm -hmm. right? Um, service station LED sign. I don't know what else you do, Nathan, because you have to have See, you yeah. have to have specificity. If we don't have specificity, it's that, that's why the building inspector's feeling was the gas station is a was an electronic messaging center because he felt right. they were one and the same. Right, I was going to say it's. I think at that time he sign. he never would he twice he kept he stayed with that and Jack agreed with him pretty much. Yeah, but I I think that a the changeable sign actually falls under the electronic messaging sign, and, but again I'm not against uh, the service stations having. The, the green and red signs advertising their, their gas prices. Would you get, how would you feel if Fink and Paris put a new sign up out front that said, um, didn't have flashing anything, it was just an LED sign that said Fink and Paris open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5. No, that's not a messaging sign, that's just a sign sure that's illuminated is. by LEDs. Well, no, because you're not changing it. I would agree with you. You're not, but, but you're not, not changing allowed, it. But it's an LED sign. It's an LED sign. Is, we don't allow LED signs at all. Very much. It's an electronic. It could be programmed from inside of our office. Well, well, that's the point. Why would you program it if it just said the name of the company? Well, what if we decided to not have it just say the name? Of the well, company? then it is a message. <laughs> so I agree. With, so I agree with you. So I'm saying, as a business owner, what if I would like to do that? If you put a, I don't know how. I haven't started. We're closed today because it's snowing. <laughs> You know, well, I'm not you, talking. If you about want to change your sign to a more efficient, instead of an incandescent sign that sure. said "Think in Paris," sure. to an LED sign that said "Think in Paris," sure. and it matched. And you know, we might need to worry about the luminosity. But do we have right. lum we have luminosity language about other signs? About no. Any uh, uh, wait? Uh, something internally lit with. I think something internally lit. I think we do have. Um, if we, if, if, to me, that's different than if you're going to program it. If yeah. you're using a different source of light because yeah. it's efficient, it's like changing a light bulb from fluorescent to LED because it's cheaper. But I think it would be denied. I and don't. I, well, I don't know I because it it's not. You're not programming. Well, well especially again, if it's not a static I, I sign. Of, forget about Fink and Paris for a minute, and forget about the gas station for a minute. What about what if the bank decides um, they want to put up a sign that has the current rate for the savings account or whatever it is? It's just numbers. It's just there to do it. I'm not saying they're going to do it, um, but that could be your next example. So by changing the wording to to restricting who you're going to restrict it to. You, does that mean everybody who comes in and works with numbers is going to have to ask for permission or go back to the to, to the uh, Board of Appeals and do the same thing that, that the gas station ended up doing? I don't think, I, I think you guys are, I think this is a great conversation and I, I think that there's more conversation in how to restrict it versus um, how to it versus up. how to open it up. And, and I get that. I, I get that we have this whole electronic messaging board at the end of the debacle <laughs> I'm calling it that again you know that was the last time we went through this process I ended up just saying 
I was done arguing about it because we were at the end and it was allowed in the zoning, I'm sorry, the uh, industrial. building industrial. Yes. And, you know, and, and we even had this, you know, discussion of uh, which there won't be any more 100,000 square foot buildings built, right? According to your son. So I, I guess... I think he's the barrier. I, I guess... Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> running? He's got to move back. But anyways, um, <laughs> I, I just think that we should be a little more open-minded versus trying to, to close, close what's already been there. I think, I mean, from my from my perspective, um, you know, I think getting the the gas station one that's that's pretty much become an industry standard. Sure. Um, you know, as uh, as far as other businesses yep. using these types of signs, I haven't seen it as much. Um, but you know, one example I think is a good example to think about too, specifically. Um, one is the Lions sign, um, which is on East yeah. Hampton Savings Bank yep. property there, yep. and the other one is the Pepin School sign, yeah. and what and those are changeable signs, yeah. um, because the the letters can be manipulated. Sure, they have to be manually m manipulated, but the problem with those signs is they because they need to be manually manipulated, they go underused. So we have a sign that sits there with information that's not current right. for for months on end yeah. um, and if those signs had the capability of displaying messages in real time they'd be much more useful to the community which is what they're supposed to be for I would agree I mean that's that's I would agree that's what I mean and, and I'm, I have firsthand uh, experience with this now because my school just placed a new um, sign school. North Hampton High School just placed a new sign that has um, it's a uh, an L sign, I guess. So it says Northampton High School on both sides, and it has messages for traffic. Um, and we had an old changeable sign, and it, I think it still says um, Thanksgiving break is <laughs> November. So, and but then the other sign is like, you know, current with what's going on today. Yeah. Um, or you know, and it, it gives current messages. So I, I hear, I hear that. Um, yeah. And I, the, the, I mean, the main, pride, I mean, the Pride Station changes their sign daily. The one with, uh, I shouldn't say daily. It's, it's probably not daily. But you know, they change their message. You know, I think of the holidays. You know, they have free coffee on whatever Tuesday or whatever. I think of that one. Mm -hmm. I think of the the same one, the Lions one you're talking about. I think of True Beer. <laughs> I yeah, think beer. of uh, Old Colony who just put up this, put their sign back. You know, I think of um, the 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 dangers, if you will, of those signs. Even the, the somebody going out there and having to put those up there, especially the high ones. And if it were, you know, the whole discussion of those signs, uh, you know, over time, not just the message thing there, but how they get dirty and how they get ugly and how the mold gets in behind the numbers and how any kid who's having a fun time and it sees the Kiwanis sign or the lion sign says, you know, eat at Joe's and makes a, <laughs> changes the letters around it can cause you know a worse looking sign if you will I mean there are a lot of things that mm -hmm. I, I just don't want to see the the ordinance um, but I, I mean again any the whole purpose of the ordinance and I know both you and Salem were basically told we're, the same thing back then when it would have passed yeah it were, was defeated what you're saying because I think the majority of the I would say defeated but it was well the, <laughs> it was definitely defeated on the LED uh, it wasn't defeated because it wasn't. We didn't push it forward. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was our amendment made that night. It was beat five to four. I can tell you who voted for it. I don't remember. I must have blocked it. Anyway, what were we saying? Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. no. I'm just saying. So that's a whole other discussion. Does the town? Because I think a lot of the town thing there was East Hampton is a special place, and we didn't want to go down that road of right. Memorial Drive and Chickabee right. or even North Hampton. Right. North Hampton isn't the end all and be all right. of of uh, LED siding, to me, I, aesthetically, I think it's, it's, uh, uh, it's in my, in yeah. my opinion, I can understand uh, that. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a, a great uh, thing. Right. I, I, Everybody I, could have that, you know, sure. size, I say, uh, uh, I don't know. I and think and I can appreciate that as long as you can appreciate that. I oh, see I, the opposite I, side I, of that and, and that. You know. yeah. I'm in a little conflict myself because the one thing I don't want is exactly that. And I certainly don't want scrolling signs. Right. Like and neither do I. Let me, let me, okay, mm -hmm. Pat, all right. Um, a community messaging board, like you just said, that changes periodically to tell you what's going on in the city. 
that to me has a lot of merit and I'm thinking wow that does have merit because then we could have current stuff for schools and current stuff for the community but then having everybody in town be able to put up signs uh, mortgage 10% or whatever they want to put up all in LEDs and all able to change that scares the hell out of me. Mm. now we need to take baby steps these LED service stations industry standards is a good way to go I would be amenable to some kind of a community sign if the Chamber of Commerce wanted to put something up that allowed everybody to put up a sign that changes at night and has one message. It's programmable, but it's only at night. It doesn't flash, doesn't, doesn't scroll, scroll yeah. or anything. Yeah. But that way, someone could type in something. Yeah. Uh, the Academy of Music, I love that building. As soon as they put a scrolling sign in the front of it, it destroyed the character of that building. It really pissed me off. Of course it's more efficient than going out and putting up a bu the billboard out there. The marquee. But the marquee that scrolls now, first of all, it, it's too bright too. It's too bright, it bothered the people across the street. I, yeah. And secondly, because it scrolls so much, I don't want to watch it. Right. I, I mean, so here for just a minute, you know, and I'm driving up, driving up on 91, and they have the beautiful LED, and I can't believe, this is what's impressive about the, about the uh, quality and the, capability of LEDs now. They have these bright, huge billboards now that change periodically. Mm -hmm. And I'm driving around the most dangerous corner in the, on 91, Chicopee Curve, and all of a sudden my eye goes flashing. What's that? I said, Jesus. And it's very effective because you read it. <laughs> but you're really supposed to be driving. <laughs> so that's why we will not allow billboards in. Well, <laughs> you can allow billboards anyway, but I'm just saying there's certain things you've got to be very careful about. So yeah. if you want to go the route of a community messaging board, I might even be okay with it as long as it's very specific. But let's stick to the service stations. Now, the thing that you brought up, Pat, that's, that, that I thought about was discrimination against other businesses that might want to change the price of something. But I don't know if there's case law or any situation in which, I know we have service stations allowing it. I'm wondering, like Northampton allows it, obviously. Mm -hmm. Do they have language that restricts it to just service stations? Or do they, is it simply that people can't afford to do it or don't want it's, to do it yet? I think it's more expensive. I'd, I haven't looked at Northampton's ordinance. I would be surprised if they have language that because they allow scrolling like that. They, they, I mean, I, and like in fact, I think, on Street, I, think scrolls a message. I think Northampton's yeah. Northampton sign ordinance is is not uh, is not as detailed as ours. So, it, which means it's open. It's to open to any lot. So anybody. So. Yeah. Um, and you know, and so as far as you know, this our charge right now. You know, um, there's two areas where I feel like our committee's focus should lie, and that is um, looking at gas station service station signs and looking at the special permit provision for now um, as, you know there's nothing to hold us back from looking at other pieces of this as we move forward but for now I think that's a good place to start uh, I wanted to when you talk about the special permits I wanted to I gave this to I wanted to give this to Nathan and to uh, you Salem because it's, it's I, I had been worried about how come sorry I had asked Jack how come how come they can just change the zoning board can just interpret the law and he told me why because of the special permit language and because there's not specificity in there so he recommended changing it so I just wanted you to be aware that I don't see the need for the special permit language at all now I understand. You want to put something in there that it will allow, but that allows that board to make that decision. A variance or something? Mm -hmm. I know there's a difference between a variance and a special you, permit, right? Well, oh. a variance is, is, is it's an something that's not allowed by the ordinance ordinarily. So if, if the sign that somebody's requesting is not allowed by the ordinance in this case, and that's, that special permit was submitted under 10.04E, mm -hmm. and it just said, it's not allowed by the ordinance, but we're going to let you do it because we can. Well, that's that's as kind of arbitrary. Uh, and uh, to me, it's arbitrary. Yeah. Why do we need that language in there? Is there a special permit process? Do you remember Salem, or you, Dave? Was that when that was put in about the special permit? Was it variant before, or was there nothing? There? No, there was nothing, nothing there. Nothing at the different. time we were discussing it during the, all those discussions, I raised concerns about that. I believe that that was part of the. And, and I was surprised, frankly, to see that it ended up in the ordinance mm -hmm. because it is problematic from a legal challenge. And it puts the ZBA in an awkward situation. In this case, in this particular case, 
they said they didn't want to grant the special permit because they felt that this changeable sign should be allowed by right. So they were actually saying we're not going to do this even though we can, which was you know, commendable, I, I think, in the part. So maybe it wouldn't be abused, but I see no way that it could be used legitimately uh, because whatever they allow, this, this squishy area, the, the discretionary area should be seen within a target of something that is allowed already in the ordinance. Right. Not and and I, think, I think one of the reasons why um, this, I, I'm having a hard time remembering exactly how this got in there, but at the time people were feeling like variances just were not issued whatsoever. So that if someone went to them that they would get denied. <laughs> but they would give somebody a way to, you know, air their um, you know, their displeasure with something that they... I think it's even just in the language. A special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals is required for exemptions to this ordinance relating to sign area or a number of signs. The ordinance has been written to cover most standard situations. There may be situations where businesses or institutions have, for example, unusual frontage, multiple access points, or multiple structures where this ordinance will not allow necessary or appropriate signage. The Zoning Board of Appeals shall review the request in accordance with Section 12.7 as well as the need for appropriate signage and shall find that the exemption is not detrimental to the zoning district and surrounding neighborhood and is necessary to meet the purposes of this sign regulation. Strict compliance with the requirements of this ordinance may be waived when, in the judgment of the Zoning Board of Appeals, such action is in the public interest and is not inconsistent with the intent of this ordinance. Right. So I think it, they wrote it well to basically yeah. say, we're, we, we tried to cover everything. I mean, right. again, it's 14, 15 pages long. To that point, in what, since 2009, it's the first time it's the first we've time. run into it. So I think you have covered it well, because I can't believe that the building inspector hasn't had to enforce this ordinance in other situations. I don't think it's necessary, and if something comes up in which that particular language points to with regard to a, a situation where a sign might need it to be done, when we look at it again, or we look at your ordinance that you're bringing forward that might clean up the language even further. But because that will take a lot of time, we're allowing the discretion of a board. One thing that you said in there, which is what Dan brought up, is the intent of our council. It's clearly stated in the minutes of the meetings what our intent was, yet they ignored that. And the language says in there that they're supposed to follow the intent of the ordinance. So, but the special permit language, he says, Jack says, gives them discretionary power. So I, I just don't feel it's necessary and I would rather make sure that the city council makes those decisions. And you did a great job, Bob. You did a hard job. It's hard. <laughs> there are those who would say it wasn't great, <laughs> but you did a hard job in defining a lot of specificity. As you said, this is more specific than most ordinances that are out there. And I think that specificity helps the building inspector. Although we found a hole yeah. that hurt him. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna. I want to. Uh, I want to take. I think that's going to be a big piece of this whole review. So, um, but I'm, I'm not prepared to to move it tonight. So. Um, well, I would like to see the language you wrote up. I'm gonna. I'm gonna Sent clean this up. I'm gonna clean this up, and then I'll I'll get that out to people. I would really like to see the. What was that? Um, way to measure light that you were talking about. Knit. I would like to see if we can find out what the knit for the racing sign is as a comparison so that we could at least, I, I hear that language and I think it's great to have some way to measure it, but we have no reference point. And I was thinking a lot about what was bothering everybody about the signage and everything. And I think the, the brightness of the sign, the LED is so broad. Um, as a term and there are many LED lights that have a narrow enough light where it's not going to be blinding and I think right. there's a distinction between that kind of LED versus the one that um, you know is is going to make you go off the road right well and, and, I, and I, th I think you know um, the nits are measured by the manufacturer Mm -hmm. um, and so as we as we see um, you know we can, I'm sure we can find signs for reference uh, but but it actually what you were saying brought up another thought and the reason why I feel like this makes sense is well, oftentimes it's hard to see the um, the gas signs where they are 
place there manually. But, um, I mean, the, the, the lights are bright enough, but sometimes the, the numbers get old or they're placed weird. And older people are going to struggle to see that more than um, a sign that's well illuminated and, and mm -hmm. it's clear. Mm -hmm. and, and I can see that, you know, we're talking about driving hazards. You know, having a clear sign that people can see without, you know, without having them having to, like, squint or, t especially in high traffic areas, makes a lot of sense. And as it was pointed out, the one that that's out, uh, is that Racing Mark, the one that's in Northampton, mm -hmm. that signs, the LEDs are not as bright as the actual sign of the store. Right. Which, so yeah. that luminosity, but the thing about LEDs, Tamara, is that they have such great capability. Mm -hmm. So a definition of the nit or the luminosity is important to be specific. And if there's an industry standard for it, I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. Because I can't believe that I don't know how you write it other than start with that. I agree with Tamara though that you gotta be careful because one thing about Racing Mart out there, there's nobody around Racing Mart. Racing Mart's all by itself. Where if we go talk East Stampin' at 7-Eleven, there's a senior complex behind them. Pride, there's apartments across the street. There's residential housing, Main Street. If you put it out there, you're talking a residential neighborhood. I mean, I think the brightness of the LED on those signs is very important of, of not bothering residents. I mean, it's not all about the convenience of selling gas. I mean, it's a, a lot of the quality of life of the residents around the gas stations. So. The same can be said, though, for the, the incandescent bulbs and the other signs. I mean, right. how bright do you really want to make them? Yeah, the one thing I'm the resistant. Yeah. Right. Well, I was going to say that's one thing I, I'm kind of resistant or hesitant about is we keep talking about LEDs, but I wouldn't have any problem if McDonald's wanted to put in a new sign and use LEDs. And historically, there says billions and or millions and 65 or billions served and served. I'm sure that's done electronically. So suddenly now we have another electronic changeable sign, but again, in energy efficiency, should they be using incandescent bulbs or LEDs? Well, that goes to price commodity and whether we should allow that. LEDs, as I said to Pat, it's just another source of light and it's a more efficient source of light. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, the one thing we didn't talk about is this is now being talked about in highway business. I don't think we can discriminate against downtown business and not allow downtown business to use these. I'm talking about the service stations here. Yeah. I think you have to open that up to those two areas. I would resist neighborhood business like the Main Street Station. Uh, me, I mean, as the as the as the precinct four counselor, I feel like. Um, is that you? Is it Main Street? I don't, know. Um, I don't look at this. <laughs> I, 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 feel, I, I mean, here's the deal. They, they close at uh, 8 o'clock at night. Oh, okay. So their sign would be turned off. You know, I mean, they turn their sign off. Yeah, that was my question. I, that, I was going to cut to that because it did say about these signs in the ordinance, the way it's written now, that they are allowed that the signs would be turned off when the business, when the business is, closed, is closed or no later than 11 o'clock or right. something like that. There's some well, there is right language. If, if you put that language in, I'd be more. It is. It, you know, it, especially it's, if it's, you know, like that, the business is closed. But if you have a 24 hour service station in neighborhood business, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they have, again, though, but right now I'm in conflict with that because. The sign that says gas is probably brighter, brighter than, than the LED. So how do you win that? I, 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 don't I mean, it's it, the sign is there. So you, it, and and a lot of this is updating and and, and I, I making it look struggling nicer. Struggling how to deal with new technology that makes life safer and easier for businesses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to uh, re-fix this, and and you guys have to leave because we're just about to. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, so we're getting we're getting conflicted. Yeah, I know. I didn't realize. Normally we're Wednesdays, but I have I had to. Yeah, but you usually deal with the size limitations after their. Yeah, I mean we're gonna we're gonna have concurrent deliberations here. But I do I do think we should consider um, if if we can see what what that brightness is. Maybe we could put in different brightness for different areas where it wouldn't constrict the LED usage, just the brightness of the usage. So in on Main Street, not saying they can't use LED, but the, the luminosity of it having a lower amount than what you would see in, you know, the, the business area, that just seems, I don't understand why you would, why you would, I know my language is horrible, but I don't understand why you would not allow an LED light at all on that gas station 
because of where it is. If it's going to cost a lot less, it's going to bring more business to that business. And, and well, as I said, I'm conflicted because mm -hmm. the LED is it's a source. What what I've always been restricted right. with is scrolling, changing, messaging, messaging, distracted messaging, you know, flashing Vegas signs. Yeah, you know? yeah. mm -hmm. I don't want that, and I don't want the slippery slope. On the other hand, you're very specific about this. So I'm not against that because, mm -hmm. again, the LEDs is just a type of sign, mm -hmm. a type of source, light source, which right. is more efficient. You have specific language, so if you want to open that up to service stations and neighborhood business, I'd probably be okay with it. <coughs> I, I think we may be facing soon, why can't I put the price of my donuts up? Right. Right. LEDs change it. One thing, you know, as someone who represents Precinct 1, you know, because of our past zoning, you know, you have a lot of residents out there, most of them are renters, but there's apartment buildings that, that face those gas stations too, through no fault of their own, so I don't think they should necessarily, in other words, we should crank up the light uh, on highway business and crank it down and, you know, because they, they have a right to live next to, I mean, like if you're in all Burger King, there's an apartment, uh, uh, right over the fence there that's been there longer than Burger King. So well, it wasn't like they those poor people moved in before Burger King was there. You know. Dan, the only thing is... I, I, it's a business there. I'm not saying they shouldn't have signs. No, no, I'm saying they have a sign now. It has to be lit by incandescent lighting. It has to be bright enough, and it's shining on the sign right. to say... But I think... So the LED, the numbers themselves are lit. Right. What's the difference? Well, as long as we're careful illuminated. with the luminosity. Well, there is a difference, though, in... Uh, in my again, you know I'm more against it. I don't want to hold you guys up because I know you. But the one difference between LED and incandescent or thing, I think, is the other spreads a little more. It's like when we went to the new streetlights, and I have no problem with the new streetlights, the new LED streetlights. But as one who comes through the intersection at Loudville a lot, you know the new intersection, you you go there. Mm -hmm. When it had a the old, I don't know, was a sodium vapor light yes. that spread the light out over that whole intersection, where you now have that one light and it just shoots the LED shoots more, straight yeah. down. Yeah. I mean, I came through there on a, a foggy night, and I'm glad they're going to put up, they're going to put stop signs now with the my with yeah. the thing. <laughs> thing. I told uh, Jim Gray should have been. But I came up through there one night saying, "Boy, I'm glad I'm from East Hampton and know this intersection," because I was coming from South Hampton, and I said, "Boy, that's." That's a wide, mm -hmm. beautiful, and it looks like you can roll through there, and then you get up there, and there's just this one little light. Little, there. Yeah. So there is, there well, is. That, a that's a case where the LED is, is not more as, efficient and not as bright. But, I mean, it's it's they just well, it, they did shoot, they chose the wrong. It. They, they need a LED that has multi, uh, more angles. Yes, can, I, can I say straight. Mike went this route because of the savings, but the technology has improved magnitudes now. So they probably you could probably better. get the same wattage of. Uh, usage of electricity and get much brighter LEDs. Oh, yeah. I know you can. Oh, yeah. In my industry, they change them constantly. Yep. Unfortunately, we bought an LED that's going to last 55,000 hours. Yep. Now think about how long that is. <laughs> and I don't have a problem with the street lights. I'm just saying there are Except a we might, yeah. Yeah. Those kind of, we might How they emanate off. the light as opposed to how much light. Oh, no, you're right. If that's um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that a little bit and then I think and w we might you know I might I might try to get the LED one out to people sooner f to get some feedback and then um, and then but w w I want to take a, a t more scrutiny t at the special permit thing because um, I feel like you know, that's an important piece I so you're not in favor of re just removing the language totally. oh no I'm not against that okay. but I'm not I'm not you're in not favor of doing that hastily <laughs> oh. Good. All right. um, I want to make sure that we, you know. Well, I'd be curious to hear what Jessica thinks about that because she's got a lot of experience with planning, and I don't feel that you guys had the best. Stuart might have had a lot going on, but I don't think you had the best kind of advice on this. Yeah, I mean, we had I, I, the, we had good advice. It was, um, but it was, but it was. But here, he so here, like the process was. I mean, the, the, here's the fatal flaw with the sign ordinance. The fatal flaw with the sign ordinance is the process, and, the, and which was which is great. But when you open the table to 15 people adding and taking out of an ordinance, not only is it a cumbersome and lengthy process, but you end up getting something that is a little bit of a patchwork of, you know, so, and really we had it, we went line by line and had everybody had input. See, that, that bothers me because we were elected to do that, not I know. the community. They can present things 
and then we listen and then you stop that kind of discussion then you move on to the city councilors having the discussion right you so, have that's why we have public speak time you, you discuss it but it sounded like that was a committee of the whole of it. Everybody, I mean, basically so. I mean you no, yeah, I went to several. so if you go to do this if you go to change this that can't be the process Ew. it has to be get input no I just want to stop the discussion and the counselors honestly if, I, if it was gonna happen if I want if, if I thought or if we thought that you know redoing the ordinance I would take the the pieces that we have and plug them into that that model, well, because you honestly, you get the best if you if you take a look at this, I'm gonna I mean, read this it's it's um I, I can how many four to two yeah yeah um it, it the way that they do it is so uh they they everything is diagrammed out they have examples of everything they show a picture so the building inspector has a pretty good idea what he's really forcing. good idea they, well, they diagram point. intersections and I'd love you to send it to Jessica because she had a lot of ideas that I have to deal with the size thing now I can't deal with this. Okay, so I'd love you to send it to her because I, I'm not amenable to changing it, but I really would urge you to keep. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm not, honestly, I'm not looking for more work to do. <laughs> but I feel like you know, um, th this is something that is uh, Dan, I, not junior, right? No, Hagen precinct, precinct one. Yep. Okay. Let's see, it's you have his email? sent to you. His son's email? I don't want his email. No. <laughs> No, I, he just He's emailed me the other day. The building thing. I'm, I recused uh, myself on that. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, which way I have to? I have right. to leave in 20 he's minutes. Well, he's one. Okay, of I'm so leaving. We're, I'm leaving. We're gonna shut up now. We have to uh, talk about this size limit. Right. Are you guys okay with that? I, I can. I'll, I'll email you guys as soon as when I revise this. I'll yeah. Email you a copy of it. Yeah. I mean, I do have some some reservations again about. I haven't had a chance to look at this. I do like how they make it specific. This is for service stations. Yeah. But the idea of like putting language in that we're suddenly only allowing these LEDs for service stations, I think opens us up to other businesses who might feel that you know somehow we're infringing on their ability right. to like Free a speech. Uh, right. Oh, and you know, it's like why shouldn't they you know put their their latest mortgage rate or something like right. that up there? Well, we can talk. Not about that, that I want to see it, but you know, it's That's just one fun. of those things of. The Supreme Court uh, doing NPR. science. Exactly. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I think if you're if you're looking at that, you need to find another language on that someplace else. Yeah. If you're gonna look at what they do for LED signs, although. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm seeing. Thank you. Thank you for All right. So um, let's look at the size limitation. Um, did you guys see Jessica's memo? I did. Um, so here's here's her thoughts. Um, uh, she, well, I believe the zoning has been filed to stop future big box retail development and support small business as currently drafted as larger economic implications for East Hampton that should be considered. So limit building size for retail only. Um, in the examples provided, the applicants packet, the uh, communities have adopted similar zoning provisions to limit bu building, building sizes have done so for retail uses only. I, I like her, I mean, again, it's, it's coming from Jessica, but just looking at the italicized at the end of each paragraph, yeah. Looking at recommendation, clarify that 50,000 square feet yes. for a single retailer. Single retailer only. That makes perfect sense. So the question is, is our intent to block big box, big box stores? If it is, well then something like this basically blocks them, yeah. but would allow, I'm going to say like Thorns Marketplace sure. or something else that could have hundreds of retailers inside. At One Ferry Street, how cool would that be? Yeah. Well, and that was the other <laughs> thing when they got to One Ferry Street, it's like, yeah, they're you know talking about potentially demolition, and then using that space for you know, somebody who right. would be willing to spend the money to demolish it is going to be interested in putting a very large structure on it. Right. So yeah. So and then her other one was cons consider reconsider the aggregate square footage. So the current proposal would limit aggregate of all buildings and planned business development or planned unit development for mixed use no more than fifty thousand square feet. They're only allowed in highway business and industrial zoning districts and require a minimum of five acres. Even with the proposed reduction of three acres for PBDs and PUDs, there are limited parcels re remaining in the highway business or industrial zoning districts to support this style of development. So, um, I'm not exactly sure if she wants that to be... Oh, oh so here we go. Um, her recommendation is to increase the aggregate square footage from 50,000. There was someone who came into this meeting, um, I don't know his name, I think he said Carp. He's 
he, he decided to go downstairs to that meeting. Mm. But he said that the staff and shop coming in is 53,000 square feet, not 50,000. Hmm. And that he... Um, okay, guys. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> We're running back and forth here. Good exercise. Um, he asked for me to bring that up, that the staff and shop's going to be 53,000. And then um, to get the industrial and business subcommittee involved in this more. I think she did send it to the Economic Development Industrial Commission. Oh, yeah. That, that, yeah. Um, and I don't, it's the, it's the thing about Stop and Shop, this doesn't have any impact on Stop and Shop. Right. Because that's, just came in before the meeting. So. That's a, um, that's a, a different mm -hmm. issue because okay. it's already permanent. Permitted. Well, it, you guys were referring to, I'm sorry, just you said a letter or something, was it a letter that came in? No, or she was said it someone was here. Someone, someone came into the meeting oh, okay. at the beginning and I <laughs> oh, so, um, so the other consideration was um, character and site design. Um, so looking at including design guidelines for highway business district as part of the zoning package. You know, that's one thing that I was wondering too uh, when we start looking at you know design guidelines or getting down to uh, the next consider current economic trends. Uh, consider amending permitting warehouse use as a mixed commercial use project in the highway business district. We have our personal opinions, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I would not really like to see a bunch of warehouses in the, the highway business district. But then when we get down to design again, it, it's that whole aesthetics issue. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we're not the aesthetics police. So, you know, yes, I want to keep local East Hampton businesses here in the city. And if providing warehouse space to them somehow assists them in doing so, you know, I'm for it, but, you know, it's just that whole thing of do we really want it in the highway business district? Right. Well, I think, I mean, you know, as far as the site design, I'm, I mean, if you go down Route 10, um, you can, it's, it's glaringly obvious that nobody was paying attention to designing buildings that were going to flow or have any sort of character whatsoever. I mean, it's a mishmash of ugly. I mean, it's pretty bad. Um, so, you know, there are some standards out there as far as site design that um, can help with that flow. Landscaping, etc. Signage. So, yeah, where, where, the, where the cars park in yeah. relation to. Right. Um, so, I mean, I'm not against looking at that. Um, you know, as a piece of this whole thing, and maybe having um, something in there that kind of addresses that. I mean, it doesn't have to be super. It doesn't have to be you know, like an example that I can think of is um, oh god, Simsbury, Connecticut. Is that is Simsbury where I drive through when I'm going down to Avon? I don't know. Do you ever go the back way? And no, but I have a colleague who lives in West Simsbury. It's like everything's like red brick. Everything or like. Uh, and it all matches. Don right. Donuts, McDonald's, they all match. Right. And, I mean, it looks really nice. But, I mean, that's pretty extreme. You know, they obviously had some pretty um, aggressive zoning laws that required businesses that wanted to be there, too. Um, but, you know, that being said, it's something that maybe we can do a little research into. Yeah. And, you know, I, but even there, and again, I'm not opposed to the site design, but I, I sometimes drive into those places and I find it unique and it's like, oh, I like how everything is in wood, you know, I'm mm -hmm. you know, down again in Connecticut and here's a stop and shop and it's it's all in wood. It doesn't look like what I usually think of as a stop and shop and everything's aesthetic and everything is matching, matching. But who's to say again that that's necessarily nice? I mean, if you would go down Main Street, Northampton, would you say, oh, well, let's redo the whole Main Street so that it... Matt, let's get rid of Town Hall because let's just, mm -hmm. you know, that castle-like structure just doesn't fit with everything else. So we're going to just wipe this clean and make everything match, paint it all the same, red brick. Or, you know, it may look nice, but does it have to be that way? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. But I, I think having some guidelines helps avoid a, a real mismatch of... Um, you know, which which I would say, like if you, you know, if you go down Route 10, 
And you and you you know the the building that Dan was talking about next to Burger King, mm -hmm. that you know it's an apartment building. Right. I mean, um, so it, it's there's it looks like people just built squ square things right. and we're like, oh, I bet we could put people here, or right. we could have someone live here. And then you know there's the ones further down on the left side across from um, the boils, like autumn management. I know the, the and there, there. there's like there's one here, and then there's, there's and yeah, and there's yeah. stuff back there. There's like you know, it's like it's so unthought out. Right. Um, it. I just don't think it could hurt to have a little bit of guidance to help them along the way, especially if it's. I mean, it's great that someone's doing a big project. They're gonna. It's gonna. You know, they're gonna try to make it look decent. But anyway, it's something to think about. Um, I. The problem that I have with that is how how white middle class that can come off as in terms of exclusionary. When you have um, an ethnic business that's using brighter pink colors or more uh, looking at the restaurant, that's purple as an example of that. I'm sure there are a lot of people who wouldn't want that as purple, but and, and it does stand out as not matching, but that's because it's celebrating Mexican heritage. And I, I get so concerned language could then be be turned into exclusionary language. I don't I don't think this the character the site design would have anything to do with anything. It's it, it I, I think that that reminds me of like a condo association. Like you can't this this would be like where the parking lot is placed in relation to the building. How much hardscaping or you know landscaping is in the you know the the development. It, the colors and things of that nature would not be addressed. I mean, at least from my perspective. That was my concern, too. And like I said, it, you know, it looks nice sometimes when you see all these matchy-matchy red brick buildings and stuff, and it's like, oh, I, I didn't realize that was a subway because it's not green and yellow or whatever the <laughs> colors are. It's, but it has a little wooden sign that says subway. It's like, oh, isn't that unique or nice? And, oh, it's neat to be in this matchy-matchy. But again, I, I celebrate that diversity. You know what I mean? If, if you want that bright purple store, go ahead and put it there. But what we're talking here, though, again, is strictly the highway business district and mm -hmm. more the site design of where are the cars parked, do you have to have landscaping, trees, shrubbery, you know, et cetera, in the area. We're, we're not mm -hmm. talking about... And part of, part of this could be... Part no, of this it wasn't could be your like, mistake. I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. Part of this could be making it bike and pedestrian friendly mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, making affordances for um, sustainable uh, vehicles, like having electric charging stations and things of that nature. You know, so I, I, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, I think, I guess maybe my example made it seem like that. That, that was just the most glaring one I could think of, of a city that had, you know, uh, character uh, restrictions or whatnot. But um, I think the one Ferry Street one is an important one to think about. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because, and what did you guys think about the mixed, uh, Ferry Street being affected by this? I mean, it's 385, <coughs> thousand square sure, feet. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, our thought was, was this, is, is the, um, you know, obviously if they can repurpose the building today, it mm -hmm. wouldn't be impacted by, by this anyways, because you could repurpose the building and keep its existing structure and still use it, so it wouldn't be impacted by the ordinance anyway. Obviously, if you had to bring a, take a building like that down today, I guess the question would be, would you want to build something, kind of like we've had the same problems with our mills over time, is if you build something that large, um, and the original tenant ends up leaving how do you ever repurpose that size building again you know just it's not a um, sustainable long-term strategy that you would use so um, so really you you know so I think obviously if you could repurpose it today uh, it would escape uh, you know would, it would escape our our limit uh, if you were to say you know build it from the ground up again I guess would you want to go and, and if it's like affordable housing and they build it like in the affordable manner that of course that uh, escapes uh, mm -hmm. the ordinance and doesn't uh, nothing impacts that uh, anyway um, but if they were to build you know so but if they build uh, if you want to repurpose it in some kind of a, a, a retail fashion or something like that obviously the limit would you know would would, would apply uh, but because again you those kind of sorts of structures it's very hard once like again like our mills we're still working and been successful in recent more recent years we're getting more successful but how, I mean how long do those sit mm -hmm. dormant uh, without being able to repurpose that size of a building just not really sustainable development I mean I guess my <coughs> thought about for that spot is it I feel like a 50,000 square foot would look strange in that in that 
footprint, you know. And, and I think that if someone was willing to maybe, I mean, there's a good chance that if someone's going to do that, they're going to have to raise the, the building. Sure. And, um, I, I feel it would be interesting if someone wanted to come in and, and do like a build something that was similar and looked similar, you know, to, of, to the buildings and, and do, I, I like your idea of like a thorns. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about that. You said that it would fifty thousand would look um, odd there, but again, as long as we're using, if it's not just for one single retailer, I, I can just actually I, I can picture something even rather modern where they might have there's water that flows through there. Yeah. Uh, you could have a waterfall, mm -hmm. even if it's being pumped up. Multiple stores. And again, it's it's walkable, bicycle mm -hmm. accessible. There's parking on the other side behind the mills. I mean, it it could actually be a pretty neat yeah. retail area. It could, be really but it, cool. it could be sixty, seventy thousand square feet or more, but not necessarily one building. Yeah. That's all right. Excuse yeah. me. Not necessarily one re, uh, retailer. Retail. Retail. Right. Thank you. Right. Um, okay. That's that's one to think about. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, obviously I know that, that one uh, has gotten some focus. People have asked about that. And I mean, I think my concern is just I don't, I mean, I think the spirit of this overall, I don't want to lose because uh, of one property kind of the overall spirit of saying, you know, the 50,000 square foot limit. So I, 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 I agree with you that, that that spot is obviously already used sort of like, a, you know, in a factory setting mm -hmm. uh, sort of deal. Um, but I, I just don't want to lose the overall spirit of the thing, you know, by just for one property or something. Right. Well, well I'm the recommendation was exempt properties within the mixed-use mill industrial zone district, which is basically Pleasant Street, Ferry Street. Yeah. Um, and in that, I mean, so I, no a, a Walmart no would never go there. No. Yeah, and that would be only dangerous if you were to raise one of those structures and put in, you know, one of those companies come and, and raise a structure and then put in a Walmart or right. put in a Home Depot or a Lowe's in that, in that area. And I think we still have, I mean, still some of those same concerns would be that you could draw, you know, you're drawing business away from your downtown. Right. Uh, and you have a, a, a make, kind of a, a, a retail like Walmart coming into your city. Um, I, w I wonder if, I think it might be, I mean, I don't know what Walmart's model necessarily is, but I feel like they're generally relatively close to the beaten path. I, don't, I wonder if Ferry Street is... Well, yeah, it's kind of funny because that, that's one of the concerns about what, if you notice when they put them, like if you look at a, uh, like Westfield and in some of those towns where they actually, and that's one of the, the dangers of this is that what they draw, the big box stores tend to draw business outside of your downtown. Mm. You know, they tend to locate in a, in, in a sort of a park outside. So, so all of your retail business goes to your, to your, you know, your big box stores, then your, your downtown suffers and closes like you saw in Westfield and in Holyoke and some of those other places where, um, like the mall came in, for example, when the mall came in, what happened to Holyoke's downtown? I mean, yeah. completely destroyed it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. so. but, but that, I mean, yeah, definitely had proximity. Like Walmart and, and Westfield has Route 20 and the mall has 91. I mean, like generally close to like more main arteries. I, I don't know. I'm, I, I'd like to sit on this one a little bit more. Okay, and cool. just yeah. FYI, I have like 10 minutes before I have to work, so. Oh, that's so, <clears throat> was there anything else on this that you guys wanted to focus on at all? Um, I think you know what we can do is like read this over, kind of sit with it. I mean, we have the ordinance, so um, I, th I think um, maybe at our next meeting we can see the implication of how because you saw these right Jessica's no, I didn't recommendations see, is that Jessica okay yeah did she I, I didn't see it at all so I'm she sure. said I, I know, talk a little blind here too. yeah okay um, so th these are just some of her recommendations on what she thinks would work I believe the planning board probably got these as well um, and so you know we'll, we're gonna digest these. we ju I just got this tonight right yeah um, yeah, it, it shows what she's saying here. Uh, just for she's saying all residential mixed-use developments. That that's really not um, that's really not true. We go through specific um, like so specific ones are exempted. For example, um, um, like so no single building obviously can go over fifty thousand square feet. But if you look for uh, uh, eight point six planned unit residential development for affordable housing, uh, that's specifically exempted from the, the limit. So you could build a could because. Uh, those those housing complexes, as you guys know, uh, can also go through the 40B process, yeah. and so those would get exempted likely anyway. So I mean, we're not right. limiting that in any way. Um, uh, so anyway, so that so so it's not all housing development. If it's obviously if it's a uh, a residential 
development plan unit development that has affordable housing uh, components to it, it would not be it would not be limited. So mm -hmm. just so you guys know the you know kind of what we're thinking there. Okay. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of yeah, take this a look at this yeah, and that way you can sure yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in here that. Warehouse. I mean, one of the problems we have in our current and why, why we were concerned, like in our industrial district, which is really, really um, kind of a, a troubling uh, aspect, is, is right. Now, obviously, we didn't cap our industrial district. We wanted yeah. to allow industrial, you know, the industrial district to, to flow. Um, but uh, one of the concerns, though, is, is that in, right now in our industrial district, you can use that for both for almost any kind of use. So yeah. it doesn't have to just be industrial uses. So that's one of the challenges is we wanted to limit the, we don't want to limit industrial uses in the industrial zone. Obviously, if someone wanted to bring in manufacturing or something like that, we want that in our industrial zone. But if you were going to bring in like retail stores in our industrial zone, obviously we would want that to be capped. I mean, you know, we don't, want, again, we only have so much limited industrial space left for those kind of manufacturers. We don't want to give that away to large scale retail development. Right. So. But, uh, Yeah, uh, the other thing I just, uh, the aggregate square footage of a planned business development, um, you know, one of the problems with that is, and I, I, that's, that's a big concern of mine, is if it, what, what, one of the reasons we wanted to aggregate this, the planned business developments is that, you know, you can have a retail like Walmart come in and, or Home Depot come in, and a planned business development is, is sort of like you see like the Red Robin, you know that area in Holyoke where you have multiple, bu multiple businesses usually operating out of one building, but could be could be um, multiple buildings uh, in, a, in a very tight area that share parking. And so what happens is how a, a Walmart could defeat your proposals if you just limit one building to 50,000 square feet, they'll say, oh, okay, and they'll build it as a, as a planned business development, which allows them to build, you know, essentially one building or have two buildings and run, like a Home Depot could run a building and then have a their uh, garden center, you know, and then put another continuation on the other side and you've essentially escaped you know, you've escaped the limitation. So again, it's, it's just that they could be very creative like that and still build very large scale developments. Nobody's built, by the way, I mean, I think this is another really important thing is there's no real limitation here. I mean, in all the history of East Hampton, so far, I mean, there are planned business developments. No one's even come close to that. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Stop and Shop being the only one who's come even close. And I think as a city, I mean, Stop and Shop obviously was pretty controversial. Um, imagine if the next retailer is like a Walmart or something like that. Again, if we don't limit the planned business development, you could go you know far exceed that. And as long as they put a two hundred thousand square foot building in a planned business development, they can come in. Right. You know, so we we have a problem there. You know, so I think we definitely have to address planned business developments in some way so we don't allow that large scale retail uh, to come in like that. Okay. So that's good to know. So I think. Um, We'll probably take these recommendations, look them over, okay. and maybe if you, when you come to our next meeting, that way you can address all address of them. them. Yeah, as we thank go. you. I appreciate that. And um, but I do have to yeah. get run in here. So um, anything else you guys want to talk about before we adjourn? Okay. So um, we'll set. I hope we set our meeting next when, on uh, Wednesday, next Wednesday, at our next meeting. Yes. Yeah. Next Wednesday we'll set our meeting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have my iPad. Yeah, that's all I got. So, um, all right, good. Uh, all right, so motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Beautiful. All right. And I'll, I'll, um, I'll type out that sign ordinance thing and send it to you guys.